Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode. And this week, I'm talking to you about the Panasonic S5. So yes, this week I am talking about the Panasonic Lumix S5, the full frame video, photo, video camera. I'll explain more in a bit. Um, so I've had this now probably about three and a half weeks and I've had a really good play and I've really enjoyed using it. It's a fantastic camera, really, really is. Um, it's really easy to hold, really well built, feels awesome really feels awesome um, it's they've sent the 20 to 60 uh, mil lens which is an f3 5 to 5 6 <clears throat> excuse me um, yeah really really good camera now obviously anybody that knows i've mainly been shooting with the panasonic g9 so this is it with its 25 mil so not a massive difference in size um, obviously the lenses are bigger because it's full frame but is it worth is it worth the upgrade so I'm not going to go into the full specs of the s5 because there's hundreds of reviews out there that do this already this is my viewpoint my opinion I'm sharing my opinion with you guys um, coming from a g9 user is it worth the upgrade to full frame? So a few of the, the light specs, and I've got them on a screen here because my memory's not that great. So it's 24.2 megapixel. Um, it's got a fast focus acquisition of 0.08 seconds. This is 0.06, I believe. Um, so in terms of the video rates, it's 4K 60 or 50. Uh, 420 10-bit and 4K 30, 25. 422 10-bit internal. <clears throat> I don't use those features, they mean nothing to me. Um, it does have dual memory slots, um, it's got a massive screen, <sighs> weather sealed to a point. <sighs> it's a full frame G9 to me, bar a few features. Now one of the bigger features is Vlog. Now Vlog is a flat video profile, very flat. Now I'll show you on the screen what that looks like. So this is the flat profile as it is straight out of the camera. Now if you don't understand Vlog, it creates a very flat image that you can then grade. So it retains a lot of colour detail, colour information, shadow depth, and gives you a, a bigger scope to play with, if that makes sense. So you can see on the screen there, as I slide across, you'll see the graded version come into play. So you can see the difference it makes. It gives you just that little bit more room. So rather than it being what the camera thinks the image should look like, you get to decide what the image looks like, if that makes sense. It gives you just a little bit more control. Uh, a lot of video professionals would shoot in a vlog profile or a flat profile to be able to give it to their color graders to fix <laughs> or to create the look that they want um, so that's a, a big plus that comes with the camera because it's a video centric camera so although it looks very similar to the g9 it operates similar to a g9 and it looks like a camera it's a similar concept to the gh5s the s1h um, it's basically aimed at the video professional rather than the stills user. That saying, the stills are very, very good, very, very clean, um, beautiful. Considering this is the kit lens, um, it still produces very, very good results. Now, I'd love to see what their better lenses look on this camera. I think they would look amazing based on what it was when I had the S1R uh, a few weeks ago when I was in Cornwall, I was blown away by that, but then that is a 50 megapixel camera. This is 24, so you'll, there'll still be a little drop, but I know that this, stills-wise, will be better than the G9. Not by much. <clears throat> so is it worth the upgrade? Mm. 
if it's not a problem and the price, the current price on wax for this kit with this lens is £2,000. £1,999 to be precise. Is it worth it? I bought this G9 for £600. I bought it off wax second hand. So that was £600. This lens was 100 and something, 130, 140 A couple of other lenses. The adapter that I use to be able to use my Canon glass. So I'm still nowhere near that. Now if the G9 doesn't have V-Log, I can upgrade with that. I can buy V-Log through the Panasonic or Wax or wherever. And it's like somewhere between 75 and 99 pounds, depending on where you go. That will give me V-Log waveforms and a few other video features. So I could do it cheaper and not have to shell out 2000 pounds and change my lens system. Because obviously now I have to go to the L mount type lenses because uh, there, I don't think there's an adapter that fits. If money wasn't a problem, I would probably be upgrade because it is a fantastic, fantastic camera. Uh, the IBIS on a full frame, oh, it's so good. Really is brilliant. Um, it's been lovely to handhold and run with this. Um, Vlog is worth every penny. I never really got into Vlog because I've not had a camera with it. I get it. I get it now and I really, really like it. Um, so I am considering putting it on my G9. There's a few bugs for me that really annoy me, that if you are in V-Log mode and you quickly want to take a photo, the camera stays in V-Log mode. So your ISO is fixed at a minimum of 640. Uh, the profile is incredibly flat um, and not what I want to import into Lightroom. I don't want flat images. I don't want punchy and over sharpened, but I certainly don't want V-Log photos. Um, it, it does cause a few issues and it, it doesn't remember so it's another step you have to do rather than just flipping the dial these great dials on the top to a like aperture priority it still can it, i then have to go into the quick menu flip it around get landscape or whatever custom profile it doesn't remember and then if i go back to video mode <coughs> excuse me um it doesn't go back to vlog it's just it's just a few of those little things unless you start using the custom menus but um yeah, just, just just a few little bugs for me, but the G9 has them as well, so it's not like it's a, a big thing, but it's just just one of those little things that, uh, that caught me off guard a few times. Um, slow motion is beautiful. That's 1080. That's uh, one, oh, I can't remember now. Will it tell me? I can't remember what it is. Um, uh, oh, it's no 60, isn't it? No, sorry, full HD, 180 frames a second on the slow and quick in full HD. So still great, looks great. And it's nice to have a quick switch on that one. So it goes straight to that mode and then you can select them. Um, but I really like it. I really, really, really like this camera. Don't get me wrong. I don't need to upgrade. Now I do suffer from gas gear acquisition syndrome. But I do think things through a bit more carefully than I normally would, I guess, when it comes to big expense like this. And I can't at this point see the need to update. Saying that, if the money wasn't the problem, I would update to it. I would transfer over and change all my kit. But if I want to use a full frame camera, I will use my Canon 5Ds. Sorry, it's, it's what I know. I know the system well with a 5D. I've been with the Canon series for 15 years. If I want full frame and I'm using the Canon 5D to talk to you now, I know what I'm getting. Everything else, the G9 will do just perfect. But like I say, that's not to say this is a bad camera. It's just at this time, for me, I don't need it. Oh, I'm growing up. Any other time I'd have gone, yeah, I love it, thank you. And another, and another, yes. By now I'd have had an S1H, S1R, S5, <laughs> GH5, GH5S, I'd have had a lot. <laughs> so that's my opinion on this one. That's not to say don't investigate yourself because 
it could be the camera for you. That'll do. Thank you as always for watching. I hope you find that somehow useful. This was just my opinion, nothing else. <laughs> if this is your first time here, please do click that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it to be notified as to when I upload a new video. Please, please, please do give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and I will be eternally grateful to you that clicks it. And I will see your smiling faces in the next episode. Do take care.